So in the last video, we talked about how to get started generating your own meshes through code. In this video, we'll expand on that to try and make something a bit cooler, like this piece of procedural terrain. To make something like this, we basically create a grid of vertices. We then fill in the grid with a bunch of triangles and adjust the height of all the vertices in order to create cool looking shapes. So without further ado, Let's generate some terrain. But first, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 24,000 quality classes on game development, tech, and more. If, for example, you want to learn how to create characters or sprites for a game you're making, I recommend you check out this really cool course on how to create pixel art. This course teaches you everything you need to know about making pixel art for video games, and at the end you will be able to design characters, items, backgrounds, and even make animations. A premium Skillshare membership gives you unlimited access to all classes for less than $10 a month. So to get started, simply click the link in the description, and the first 500 people will receive their first two months for free. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> So to generate a grid, we can use the exact same structure as in our previous video. We still have an object with a mesh filter and a mesh renderer, and then of course a script to generate our mesh. And inside the script, we have two basic methods, one for creating the shape itself, and then one for updating the mesh in Unity. And we really only need to modify the shape function to make it generate a grid instead of a simple quad. So inside of our create shape, let's just remove all of the code that is currently there. And the first thing we need to do is to figure out how many vertices we're going to need for our grid. This is of course going to depend on the grid size. So let's go to the top here and let's add two public variables. A public integer, which we're going to call x size, and let's set this equal to something like 20. And another public integer called z size, let's also default this to 20. Now, if we look at this graphic, we can see that if we have three squares on the X, we actually need four vertices. And if our grid is, for example, two squares tall, we need three vertices. So the total number of vertices in our grid is equal to our X size plus one multiplied by our Z size plus one. So in our code here, we can go to our create shape method and we need to set our vertices equal to a new vector three array. And the length of this array is going to be X size, plus one, multiply with z size, plus one. Awesome. So we've now created all the vertices that we're going to need. We then need to loop over each of the vertices and assign them a position on the grid. I would like to do this going from left to right, like you see here. So to do that, let's start by creating a for loop and the variable we'll call z and we'll keep going as long as z is less than this z size. However, remember, it's not only the Z size, it's actually the Z size plus one. So we'll keep going as long as it's less than or equal to the Z size. Then inside of this for loop, we're going to need another loop that is going to loop over all of our squares on the X. So we'll create four int X equals zero. We'll keep going as long as X is less than X size. And again, we want it to be less than or equal to the X size. So now we're looping over all of the vertices. But in order to actually access a vertice and change it, we need an index. So let's go to the top here and create an integer called i and set it equal to zero. Then inside of our for loop, we can set vertices and take the ith vertice and we'll set this equal to a new vector three and it will feed it the current x as the x position, just zero on the y because we want it to be a flat plane and then the z as the z position. And of course, after this, we'll need to make sure to increment i by one. And this is going to work just fine. This is going to create our grid with all of our vertices. However, there's actually a neat little trick that we can do to make this a bit prettier. And that is we don't actually need to create our integer i up here. Instead, we can delete this and move it into the for loop itself. So here when creating the z, we can also set i equal to zero and then just use a comma. And this is going to create both a variable called i, set it equal to zero and one called z that is also equal to zero. And the cool thing about this is that i is now local to this for loop. So it can only be used within the for loop. And also it saves a bit of space. Pretty cool. And that's pretty much it for our vertices. Of course, we can't really see them at the moment because we haven't defined the triangles that make up our mesh. But if you want, we can actually use gizmos to display the vertices in the editor. To do this, let's go to the bottom here and let's create a void on draw gizmos. And in here we can loop over all of the vertices. So we'll create a for loop. We'll keep going as long as i is less than vertices dot length. And for each vertice, we'll go ahead and draw a sphere. So gizmos dot draw sphere. We'll draw it at the vertex position. So vertices of i. And we'll give it a radius of say 0.1. 
We also need to make sure that we don't do this when we don't have any vertices generated. So we'll just add an if statement here saying that if vertices is equal to null, well then chicken out. All right, so if we save this code now and go into Unity, let's hit play to generate our vertices. Then inside of a scene view, we can actually see a really nice grid of a bunch of spheres, each one representing a vertex. And we can of course change the X and Z size over here. Awesome. Now, the next step is to define the triangles that make up our grid. Let's start by making the first triangle. This triangle is going to go from zero and then up one point. But since our vertices are ordered from left to right, we can't just add one. Instead, we add the X size plus one to go up one row. From there, we simply go back down to one. So to do this in code, we first need to set a length for our triangles array. So we'll go triangles equals a new int array. And so far, we're going to need three points. We then set each of the points. So the first point, triangles zero, is going to be equal to zero. The second one, triangles one, is gonna be equal to x size plus one, as we just talked about. And the triangles two is going to be equal to one. If we save this and go into Unity and hit play, voila, we can now see that a single triangle appears. For the second triangle, we want to go from one, then up to x size plus one to move up one row and then to x size plus two to stay on the same row, but go one to the right. This can definitely be a bit confusing at first, but don't worry, it gets much easier with time. So first we of course need to increase the number of triangles in our array to six. And now again, we can simply add the points. So triangles three is going to be equal to one. Triangles four is going to be equal to x size plus one. And triangles five is going to be equal to x size plus two. Again, if we save and run this, we can see that we've now created a perfect quad. Now, to fill out the rest of the grid, we basically repeat the code for the first two triangles and offset them each time. To do this, we'll first create a loop that is going to iterate over all the squares on the X. So we'll create a four, int X equals zero. We'll keep going as long as X is less than the X size. We'll take all of our triangle code and put it inside of this for loop. We also need to create two variables, one to keep track of the vertex we're currently looking at. Let's call that vert, so int vert equals zero. And we'll make sure to increase this by one every time we go through the loop, so vert plus plus. And we also need one to keep track of the triangles. Let's call that int tries and set it equal to zero as well. And every time we go through and have added six points to our triangles array, we'll increase tries by six. We then take our vert variable, which is going to increase by one each time and add it to each of the points so that as we loop through the squares, the triangles will shift by one each time. In other words, we'll simply go vert plus zero, vert plus x size, vert plus one, another vert plus one, vert plus x size plus one, and vert plus x size plus two. So for the first square, vert is going to be zero and it's simply going to be zero, x size plus one, 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 x size plus two, and so on. The second time we go through, vert is going to be one. So it's going to shift everything one to the right. So this is going to be one, this is going to be x size plus two, this is going to be two, this is going to be two, and so on. And it'll keep doing this until we've gone over all of the squares. We also need to add the tries to the triangle index so that we don't keep updating the first six points over and over, but we actually shift to the next triangles in our list so that we don't keep updating the first six points over and over. So we'll add tries plus zero, tries plus one, tries plus two, and tries plus three, tries plus four, and tries plus five. Awesome. Of course, we don't want to create a new triangles array every time inside of this for loop. We need to move this out of the for loop. There we go, so now we are creating a triangles array and then we are updating all of the points. And this time it's not gonna have a fixed amount of six points. Instead, we're basically using six points for each quad and our X size and Z size define the amount of quads in our grid. So we can simply say X size multiplied by Z size, the amount of quads multiplied by six. And that's the amount of triangle points that we're going to need. So if we now save this and go into Indy and hit play, we can see that we are generating the entire bottom part of our grid. If you want, we can actually add a bit of code to delay each step of adding the triangles. This is pretty cool because it allows us to see how the triangles are gradually being generated. To do this, we need to change the function here into a coroutine. So we'll change it from void to i enumerator. If you've never heard about coroutines before, I'll have a link for that in the description. For now, you can just follow me. And then every time we've updated a triangle, we can put yield return new wait for seconds. And I'm just gonna wait for, let's say 0.1 second. Also, we're currently only updating our mesh in the start method. This is of course the most effective way of doing things, but if we want to see these changes happen over time, we need to move this into an update method. So we'll create void, update, 
and simply paste our update mesh method in there. And finally, to call a coroutine, we can just call it like a normal function. We need to add start coroutine. There we go. So now if we play that, we can actually see the triangles gradually being generated. Pretty cool. Now, to fill out the rest of the rows, we simply wrap everything in another loop that will go over each square on the Z. So in our code here, we'll create another for loop. Here we'll set Z equal to zero and keep going as long as Z is less than the Z size, just like with our X loop here. And we can then take our entire for loop and put it inside of this new loop. Now, if we run this, it is going to work. However, it's not going to look quite right. As you can see, the triangles are generating, but we're getting these weird lighting effects. Also, you can see this orange line that's connecting in a pretty weird way. The reason for this is that every time it wraps around to create a new row, the script is creating a triangle between the previous square and the next one. It results in this weird behavior. This is of course not something we want. Each square should only be connected to the ones next to it. Not like it's doing now where you can see it's creating weird connections underneath our plane. To get rid of this, we go into our script and every time we finish looping over a row, we need to increment vert by one. This will make sure the script skips generating a triangle that goes from one row to another and simply move on to the next points. So after our first for statement finishes, we want to write vert plus plus and it should now be working. We can see as it wraps around, there's no weird lighting effects or anything like that. Finally, the last and definitely coolest thing is that we can adjust the height of all these vertices. For example, if we want to make it look like terrain, we can add some simple Perlin noise. If you have no idea what Perlin noise is, we have a video on that that I definitely recommend you check out. So inside of our script, this is actually really simple. We just want to go to where we generate all of our vertices. Instead of just setting the Y to zero, we'll create a float called Y. We'll set it equal to math.perlinnoise. We'll input our X and Z. And let's multiply everything by say two, just to make it more clear. Also, we can multiply our X by 0.3 and our Z by 0.3, just to zoom out of our noise a bit. Again, all this stuff is explained in the Perlin noise video. And we can then simply use this Y value for our vertices. I'll also just make this go a bit quicker by reducing the delay. And now when we run it, we can see that we're creating this really cool uneven terrain like surface. Now this is only by adding a single line of code. I really recommend you experiment with combining multiple layers of noise to create more interesting results. Or maybe try to use the sign function to create wave-like behavior. I'll of course have some links to where you can learn about that in the description. Finally, we can of course go in here and remove the delay. We'll turn it into a normal function. We'll put the update mesh at the top here to make it more efficient. Also, we don't need to start it as a coroutine. And let's also get rid of all the gizmos. And now when we play, voila! We've created this super cool terrain. Yay! That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Also, don't forget to check out Skillshare. Simply click the link in the description to get started. And if you like these videos, consider supporting us on Patreon. Patreon is an awesome way to help us make these videos by donating a monthly amount. You can choose how much and cancel at any time. We really appreciate all the support. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in October, and a special thanks to Andrew Kalininko, Art Armin, True VR Systems, Simmer IO, Alexander Blair, Cheetah 3D, Jeff Johnson, Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Chris, Sheriff Abdullah, Fizzle Marify, Fang Sulong, Leo Lasset, Vincent Van Skua, Swears D, Derek Kimskirk, Ronan, Tima Polderbach, Bruins Cat, Naoki Wasaki, Gregory Pierce, Larry Tweed, James Rogers, Rob Farron, Pakum Bernia, Erasmus, Robert Bund, Corey Jackson, James P, Anthony Patton, Kyo Swedeski, and Abrisi. You guys rock.